Ooh. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Town, USA. Population morning, I guess. I don't know. <coughs> I uh, crashed early last night. Crashed to bed early last night and uh, woke up at like one o'clock and worked on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That thing worked on the KiCad scripting uh, script code programming. I guess it's technically Python scripting, so script. Worked on that for several hours <laughs> and then went back to sleep. Some of the stuff, like just the early morning, it's the only time you get the the clarity to be able to focus on it. <coughs> so you, uh, you get to, you get something out of falling asleep early. Uh, crashing or like conking out, you know, it's just like unintentionally falling asleep. But I'm also old, so. <laughs> well, I'm 37. I'm 37. I'm not old. Just call me Dennis. You probably didn't even know I was called Dennis. Right. So having the uh, this was this was all one note. So I was sitting there on the the tablet. Uh, I did have some. I found uh, I've tapped into a YouTube vein of. Uh, um, I'm not sure what it's called. It's like, it's like the most generic techno, which is like, when I was a, a kid in the 90s, like this was the techno that was just like, and you're just like, oh, this is, it's, it's practically like bleeps and bloops. It's, I mean, compared to what's nowadays, it seems like, uh, seems like 8-bit essentially, but it's still, uh, it's, uh, it's inoffensive, uh, well, it's not, I mean, it has no words, which is, uh, very important to me, because this mental process of talking to myself and talking myself through processes as I'm thinking about them, uh, the linguistic process is interrupted by music that I listen to that has any kind of voice or, or uh, words in it. This also works for foreign language music. Uh, because you're not uh, you're not triggering that same part of your brain, so it works all right. You can have words as long as you don't understand them. <laughs> uh, but it's also like pretty pretty generic, low key techno. So it's you know it's nothing too hard, nothing too crazy. It's just like uh, I don't call it background noise, but it's it's good focus work and uh, <clears throat> focus music. And I usually work with, um, I mean like historically, I've worked with, uh, historically, well, it's true, it, it is, historically in my life I have worked and coded, you know, that focus time, uh, that single focus time has been spent using uh, uh, happy to be hardcore music, which is quite more aggressive and has uh, has some words in it. But it's usually just the same thing repeated over, and uh, I've never, never grown tired of that genre. There's actually someone on YouTube who has uh, does mixes called "What Happy to Be," "What Hardcore Used to Be," or something like that. How hardcore used to be, uh, and he does his own mix of, I guess, newer stuff. It's pretty good. It's, it's quite good actually. I like it. The other thing is the music is like, I don't know, it's like different competing thoughts in your head, uh, and you have, 
I had this experience where I was trying to write something. This was, I guess, a long time ago. Probably my 20s. Alright, I'm not 40 yet. Alright, cool. It was like 15 years ago. <clears throat> is that true? Yeah, it is like 15 years ago. Wow, goodness. Alright, well, just me. Just, just call me Dennis, alright? Um... I was trying to write something, and I knew, basically, I knew exactly what I needed to write, and I was trying to focus on writing it, and my uh, wife was listening to something, watching a TV show or something, and I could just barely hear it. <coughs> <coughs> and my mind just couldn't focus on anything but that thing. I was like trying to figure it out. <coughs> I guess that's kind of like having something that you can just barely hear and you're trying to solve it like a problem to figure out what it is. And I said it's more like you're shutting the music shuts out that voice, but it's more like there's multiple thing multiple streams of thought going on in your head. And uh or at least in my head. And the music shuts down most of them. <laughs> uh, shuts down most of them except the one. You know, if you get the music, I guess if you have music with lots of uh, interesting lyrics or uh, even just like interesting melodies and progression, it, it absorbs too much of my focus and then I stop working and I start just listening to the music. Uh, <clears throat> but if the music is simple enough or I've heard it enough, then it uh, it kind of quiets everything else, and then I can just kind of focus on that, laser focus on that thing. So I wonder if that applies to even more simplistic music. Like if there's a spectrum of <clears throat> music complexity that I can listen to for different effects. <coughs> Goodness. <clears throat> The uh, <clears throat> the other bonus of this that of that particular music that uh, inoffensive '90s uh, techno is it just kind of kind of goes into the background and you can kind of hear it. You get a little bit of a beat going and and that's about it. Like it just kind of keeps going. And I've been listening to it on streams. Oh, it's, uh, it's actually old enough that uh, the songs are not. Um, at least as far as I know, technically copywritten, or they don't get copy struck, and I don't, uh, I don't feel very positively about YouTube's <coughs> copywriting policy thing. <coughs> as someone who had a, um, that's like a 15-hour coding stream, uh, brought down worldwide for like 30 seconds of copyrighted stuff like 30 seconds of the song it just blocked out the whole thing and it has tools now where you can edit parts of the video to remove the audio and I have done that before but you can't do it if the stream is 15 hours so good luck <laughs> you'd have to uh, take it down edit it yourself and then re-upload it which breaks a whole bunch of other things and just just absolutely not worth it um, so if you listen, I, I don't think I have the volume of the mix right just yet. Um, but if you listen on the previous stream or more recent streams, you'll be able to hear it in the background. That's kind of what it's meant to do—just be kind of inoffensive and floating in the background for you, while I uh, ramble incoherently to myself <laughs> and to the the people on chat. Um, <clears throat> I am getting a. Uh, speaking of audio mixing. I did get a boom for my um, mic, so I, I don't know. Like all of all of the audio that comes through on that has to be cranked up pretty high, and then it sounds all right. But when the mic is like really close to my mouth, <laughs> it sounds really good, and it is the appropriate volume. So <clears throat> I'll figure out how to position that so that it doesn't get in the way 
and it's still, you know, usable and you can hear me. <sighs> so, stream quality, huh? Yeah. Might even be able to turn up the bit rate. Ooh, who knows? <laughs> I feel like things are pretty, pretty visible. <clears throat> That's the other thing about that, uh, like, working in that, that visual medium. If I was just coding, you know, um, a web app or something, like, all of that would be logical structures, and I would be, I'm just thinking about OneNote, um, like, all of that would be logical structures, and I would just be thinking about it, and I would probably write some tables, like, like draw, draw out, uh, some structure for the tables, and, and link them together, and then be able to remember that, you know, when this changes, that has to update over here, you know, draw, draw a little, it looks, it winds up looking like a mind map, kind of, or, um, <clears throat> I don't know. It usually winds up looking like a mess, but I can make sense of it. <clears throat> and then identify weird spots where, you know, three points converge and I go, oh, wait a minute, that's going to cause a problem. And then figure out the problem. And then write a note to myself to, to fix the problem <laughs> before it happens. Um, but when you're dealing with graphics like uh, the KiCad and the footprints and stuff like that, uh, or even just building SVG utilities, <clears throat> all of that is plotted on an X and Y plane and being able to visualize that plot and figure out all right if the value is here and the value is there what would it be um, that's a lot easier for me to for me to figure out <clears throat> like even just figuring out that the the trigonometry for that best guess process for moving footprints that was like I needed to be able to write I needed to be able to draw and to have to be able to take pictures and then draw on those pictures and to you know draw arrows that connect things to other things and work things out like that <clears throat> so that's a I guess the, the graphical work is needs to be more needs to be more visual uh, which is you know completely understandable I talk about like uh, the medium of text a lot, but there are many things which should be graphical. Uh, if you're trying to plot out how you should um, how you should crop a photograph, for example, having the visual feedback of if I move the if I drag the line to here, then this area will be cropped, <laughs> and if I drag it over there, this area will be cropped, makes a lot more sense. Uh, than look, staring at the picture and thinking, how many pixels is that? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking like uh, uh, 1,087 by uh, 702, uh, all the way down to this point down here, <laughs> you know, pl plus 80 pixels on the x-axis. Oh, no, no, wait, 82 pixels. Yeah, just, it doesn't make any sense. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a stickler for it. There's definitely, uh, I think that if things can be text, though, <clears throat> it is better. There is actually a, um, a program written by those, uh, that team that I like, 100 Rabbits. It's called uh, Ronin, and it's a visual, it's a textual image manipulation tool with uh, immediate visual feedback. So you can put in 87 and then have it highlight that area and you go, oh, not 87, 88 or 89, 89 and a half. You know, you can get that instant feedback for the numeric, to turn the numerical representations into, you know, the layout of the photo and decide how you want it to cut. Now, obviously that's not very efficient, but it is very efficient if you're doing it for, you know, 100, uh, 100 pictures. And you want to cut, cut, crop them the exact same way. <clears throat> so there you have it. Uh, Troy agrees to use the mouse sometimes. 